ولا تفرقوا واذكروا نعمة الله عليكم إذ كنتم أعداء فألف بين قلوبكم أصبحتم بنعمته إخوانا وكنتم على شفا خفة من النار فأنقذكم منها كذلك يبين الله لكم آياته لعلكم تهتدون يا أيها الذين آمنوا قوا أنفسكم وأهليكم نارا وقودها الناس والحجارة عليها ملائكة غلاب شداد لا يحصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمنون السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته عبدالله السبلين في الإسلام هم إشاء رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم Those whom we have in our hearts to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do so according to the example of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let us take the opportunity to glorify Allah and to praise Allah and to thank Allah and to be subservient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no matter what our circumstances or situations are. My beloved siblings in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen us to be responsible and to be the representative of His on this earth today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has told us, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا My beloved siblings in Islam, let us be very clear about the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he says that the best among you is he who learns the Qur'an and teaches it. It is only unfortunate today that is the last thing that we as Muslims consider doing although Sunnah tells us that it is the best thing to do. Can you imagine? We follow us of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but when he says the best thing for us to do we say not for us. The time is different. People are different. The examples are different. Everything is different. This does not apply to us. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna hadha al-Qur'an yahdi lillati hi aqwam wa yubashiru al-mu'mineen al-lazina yahmaloon al-salihat anna lahum ajran kabira. Those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have entrusted with this Qur'an Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that he has made them powerful and stronger than the average person. So you're right. You're absolutely correct. If you're not doing what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says the best thing to do, then you're not like those who are doing it. If you're not doing it as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you're not in service and you're not in memory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, <clears throat> consider the fact that yes, you're not like those who are in memory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think about something, my beloved siblings in Islam. We have Jewish people. We have Muslim people. We have Christian people. We have people who claim no religion at all. They're atheists. They say there is no such thing as following an organized religion. And everybody is all doing a good job. Everybody is doing the same thing. If you go to a Christian and you say to them, what do your church do? They'll tell you all these services that their church does. And you're like, oh, wow. Hey, you can't mess with this. And you go to the synagogue. And you look at their services. And you'll find all these different services and programs that they have for their members. Like, oh, boy, Muslims, man. I tell you, we're a little bit behind. We got to go to big city like Atlanta, like like uh, Carolina, like uh, Texas, you gotta go there so you can see the program that we're doing. And so you go to those big masjids, and what do you see? The exact program that they're doing at the synagogues, at the churches, at these centers. What is the difference? Where can the difference be? And then, don't take my word for it. Go to your local masajids or centers. When it's time, election time, what do they do? The partying for the senators, the partying for the House representatives, the candidate for this, the candidate for that. That's the same thing that they're doing at the churches, the same thing that they do at the synagogues. There was 
not the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Or any of the prophets. Or any of his companions. Never will we find Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam partying with non-Muslims. Indulging in amusements with them and following their ways. Because there is no success in that. That one is only temporary. That's why we stayed in the position that we stayed in because we're not abiding by his way. We're not abiding by the Quran. We know it, but we don't care. We tell our children, you gotta make a living. Don't study the Quran. Don't waste your time with Islam. Yeah, you can do it at home, just as a way for you to know who Allah is, maybe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, la tatakhidu ladhina attakhadu dinakum hudhu wa la'ibha, mina ladhina hudhu al-kithaba min qabrikum wa kufar awliya. Wa attaqu Allah ayyum kundu mu'mini. Do not take the way of those who take this Islam as an amusement, as a show in a game. Don't be like them. That will not bring any success. At the end of the day, we're going to have the same thing as Ahlul Kitab had. We are Ahlul Kitab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, inna kathira min al-ahbani wa al-wahbani la'akuluna amwal al-nasi bil-fadir wa yusudduna an sabirillah wa al-ladhina kunzuna al-dahaba wa al-fidbata wa la yunfiquna ha fi sabirillah fa bashiruhum bi'adhaab al-alim. <laughs> During the era of Sayyidina Ahmad bin Khattab, went to Asham. And at that time, Sayyidina Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan was in charge of Sham. Sayyidina Abu Dhar al Ghifari, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, There is not a tongue under the face of the earth, or on the face of the earth, or under the sun, that is more truthful than the saying or the tongue of Abu Dhar al -Kifan. When he found out how they were living in Asham, he called them out on it. And he told them that all these things that you're gathering like the Kufar, all these things that you're gathering like the Ahlul Kitab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already warned us against them. Sayyidina Muhammad caught wind. And he wrote to Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu and he told him to stop Sayyidina Abu Dhar al-Tifari from having any other contact, open communication to silence him. Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu said, let Sayyidina Abu Dhar al-Tifari do what it is that he wants to do. This ayah that he quoted, inna kathira min al-ahbani wa al-Rufban, verily the people of the book, people of the Jews and the Christians, they're taking this way they're gathering their wealth and their money and on a day of judgment, it is going to become almost like a, an iron that they put, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heats it up and he puts it through those. And he says, Hada ma anfusikum. This is what it is that you have saved for this day by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we follow their way, we're not going to get the success that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised us. On the other hand, there is not a single profession that you know of today. Let it be a politician. Just look at how this political system has failed the people. Look at how it fails to protect. Look at this political system and how it fails to bring the security to the people. Look at it. It's a shamble. It serves the 10% at the top and leaves the 90% at the bottom. Islam came to liberate us from that. And by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we would not leave this face of the earth until it is done. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself has promised it. Whether it's an engineer, whether it's a lawyer, whether it's a business person, whether it's a pilot, whether it's a military man, it does not matter who it is, whether it's an entertainer, whether it's a sports person, it does not matter who it is, whatever it is that they do, they leave it here on this earth it does not make them happy, it just makes them more greedy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the better of it in worshipping Him and not associating any other with Him. 
Think about this, my beloved siblings in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ba'da'u billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim, bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa qalati al-Yahudu Uzaymi ibn Allah, qalati al-Nasara al-Masih ibn Allah, ذلك قولهم بأفواههم يضاهئون قول الذين كفروا من قبل قاتلهم الله أن يفكون. so they're taking عيسى بن مريم and عزيز the Jews and the Christians they're taking them as their gods. consider this what makes us really different when we cannot ourselves intellectually and logically discuss one on one we have to say Scholar such and such a person, this scholar, he passed away, what year? Scholar such and such a person, this is his, this is his fatwa. What is different from us? We're thinking about getting an, a, an opinion from somebody who died already. <clears throat> we've implanted, we've got it so well from them. We got the lesson of the Ahlul Kitab so well. That we cannot find a common modem of leadership to just follow and to obey and to pursue, we have to say we're not scholars on everything. We're not scholars on everything. We have to go and refer to a book about us from a scholar who passed away in such and such a century. When we have the Quran. But the problem there again. You sit down, you ask how many of the Imams, how many of the Ustadas know 5% of the Quran? How many know 10% of the Quran? We abandoned it a long time ago, maybe that's why. And then it gets worse. Although you know like 5% or 1% of the Quran, you say you know so many Ahadith. But the problem is you never read about the reason why those Hadith are even there. You don't know the circumstances of the hadith. You never read the story of the Prophet ﷺ. You never bothered to really indulge in the knowledge, the wisdom. Oh Abu Bakr al-Siddiq alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati khulafa al-Rashidin al-Murtadin. You never bothered to look into the stories of the khulafa al-Rashidin. You never bothered. But you have so many opinions about hadith and you don't even know if they are so now we is, if you if what you're saying, you're not getting it out of Quran. What you're doing, you're not getting it out of Quran. You're not getting it out of Hadith. You're not getting it from the saying of the life of the Prophet. You're not getting it from the Khulafa or Rashidi. Who are you getting it from? Where is it coming from? It's coming from the Mushrikeen. It's coming from Shayateen. They're putting it as the truth. You don't like the truth, then you don't like Allah. Allah is true. And he will stand for the truth. And he will stand for the justice. And it does not matter what you try to do or anybody else to put out, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uphold the truth. We beat the children if they, if they forget an ayah of the Quran or a word of the Quran. But we don't find anywhere in the Quran or in the hadith where Prophet did this. But we don't care. We do it anyway. We know that we are talking to somebody in a way that we don't want to be spoken to. But we don't respect them maybe because they don't have money or the color of the skin is not. So we don't care. We don't care about that. We are discriminatory, but we don't care. We're racist, but we don't care. It's the truth. We don't like it, but we don't care about that either. And that is what makes the difference between the one who has taqwa and the one who does not have taqwa. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا لَمْ shit." If you have no shame, then you do as you like. So now, I ask you something. Are we among those who hope that we see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Are we among those who hope that we were with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Are we among those who hope that we suffered? That we sacrificed with the Sahaba? Are we among them? Are we among people that had 
had no category in the category of Rasul alayhi salatu wa salam in We spend so much time watching the games, so much time having the parties, so much time being unjust and unfair, so much time being like mushrikeen and munafiqeen. We spend so much time doing that and we think that we're going to go to Jannah because of the fact that we handed out a box last weekend in a volunteer uh, uh, a seminar. It's all a game, it's a joke. And shaitan is playing it with us. And if we do not wise up, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will change us and replace us with a party who win. Make no mistake about it, my beloved siblings in Islam. The one who has everything that they're seeking for of this world, and even one more, compared to the one who has even one, one ayah of the Quran in their heart, but they live with that one eye. They are much better than them. Superbly better than them. Too much better than them. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has illuminated their hearts. That's why. There's no way you can take that happiness unless you open their heart. And at that time, they're with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the best of it in this life as well as in the hereafter. Every time we come to the masjid and we do something or we say something or we hear something that is a blessing for us and we're praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us. Do we consider that this and what we're doing may be our very last deed? Do we think that? Do we think that what I'm getting from this khutbah is going to benefit me as I leave this earth? Do we think about that? Or do we say when we come in, I'm going to see how good of a khutbah this is going to be. You know, last week was pretty decent. I was at the other masjid. That one is okay, so let me try this one out. Last time I was here, some months back, it wasn't this bad. But even, only if you understand, only if we understand, only if we comprehend, that even the shahada, the kalima to shahada to Allah ilaha illallah wa anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is better for us than anything else that we have. And by us not spreading the call of Islam, those who leave this earth without hearing, without accepting Islam, we should, we, we should think what we had about that. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who guides who he wills and he misguides who he wills. But did we take care of our responsibility as Muslims? Were we, more, were we busier, you know, in the entertainment? Were we busier throwing the parties? Or we're busy with trying to show how Americanized or how Europeanized we are, but we're busy with that to where we did not spread even one, 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 one ayah of the Quran where we did not bother to even give one kalima to sadaqah, one kalima to tayyibah as a sadaqah. We didn't bother to do any of that. We did not bother to smile. We did not bother to do anything in order to get the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a daily basis. And then we say, what are we supposed to do? Yeah. We have the Prophet's example, we have the Companion's example, but we don't look into it. So what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to look into it, organize ourselves, inshallah, make the right type of steps, take the right type of steps, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put blessing in it, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us strength and understanding. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us wisdom and tranquility and patience. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us everlasting illumination. And may Allah ta'ala make the Quran our companion. And may He make our footsteps firm on the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.
أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين أستغفره إنه هو التواب الرحيم.